Do you ever hear the expression, the seat of power? Our children are not safe. I think his own words will testify against him. The people are very upset. They are afraid. They're discouraged. What faith? This is always about abuse of power. Something has to happen soon. In the first installment, we covered the alleged rape of the cathedral organist by Wojtek Sobchuk, a Polish seminarian who once studied in Knoxville, Tennessee. We also reported on the ensuing cover-up by Bishop Richard Sticka. But none of this can be understood without looking at the wider picture, what some have called a homosexual pipeline from Poland to the U.S., involving numerous gay seminarians funneled through a notorious seminary just north of Detroit, with the help of one of the highest-ranked cardinals in the world. Wojtek is a seminarian studying for the Diocese of Knoxville. He's from Poland, and I often kind of tell others that he's kind of a, a gift of St. John Paul. And we In Bishop Sticka's 2019 appeal, he singled out Sobchuk among his seminarians, calling him a gift of Polish Pope John Paul II, seen as a nod towards Cardinal Stanislaw Dziwisz the Pope's longtime personal secretary. Jeevish, former Archbishop of Krakow, has been a longtime supporter and patron of Saints Cyril and Methodius Seminary in Orchard Lake, Michigan, where numerous Polish seminarians have studied. Orchard Lake was the subject of a special report by church militant last year, exposing it as a gay Polish pipeline, where gay seminarians from Poland were funneled to the U.S. through its compromised rector, Father Mirosław Kroll, the subject of two lawsuits alleging homosexual misconduct. Sitting Detroit Archbishop Alan Vigneron is also named in the suit, the man slated to become the president of the U.S. bishops this coming November. These recent charges point to a culture of corruption that has been festering at Orchard Lake for decades. The lawsuit also claims Kroll would often seek out and recruit students who had failed out of seminary in Poland or who had issues with alcohol or sexual matters. Cardinal Dziwisz played a role in helping Kroll recruit seminarians, among them Wojtek Sobchuk. Cardinal Dziwisz, he is a very close friend of my uh, pastor in Poland, also knew my family. He was visiting the Knox Knoxville Diocese when it was the dedication of the new cathedral. Right. And then he came to the Orchard Lake, my previous, my former seminary, and he told me, like, they need a Polish priest, they need a Polish seminarian, so you should go there. Dziwisz also happens to have a cozy, decades-old friendship with Bishop Sticka, stretching back to 1988. June 14, 1988, was the first time I met Pope St. John Paul II, and as always, Cardinal Dziwisz was with him. Sticka recounts in the diocesan paper in 2017. The Cardinal was very gracious. I would see him a number of times in Rome whenever we would attend private papal masses. I visited with him when he was the Archbishop of Krakow along with Deacon Sean Smith, our diocesan chancellor. We stopped at his residence in Krakow and he remembered me. Sticka tweeted a photo of himself with Jeevish and Regali in St. Louis, Missouri in August 2017. With the announcement, Cardinal Stanislav Jeevish will be attending the dedication of our new cathedral and bless our shrine to JP2. The dedication of the $42 million Knoxville Cathedral took place March 3rd, 2018, where Jeevish made a special trip in order to attend. When he loves America, he said, God bless America. Jeevish returned the next day to offer the Polish Mass. After that, the Cardinal was a special guest for an event titled conversation with the cardinals, which included Cardinals Justin Regali, William Lovada, and Papal Nuncio Archbishop Christophe Pierre. And to have Cardinal Jeevish with us here in the Diocese of Knoxville is a tremendous honor, I think, for all of us, but also in a very particular way for myself. 
In a now-deleted tweet from March 2018, Stika said, Cardinal Stanislav Jeevish gave a very special gift to our new cathedral, a favorite stole of Pope St. John Paul the Great. That stole is now on display in the Knoxville Cathedral. And in another deleted tweet from March 2020, he wrote, Nice to receive a nice note today from Cardinal Stanislav Divish. Nice to call him a friend as well. Stika has since fallen quiet about their friendship, deleting all evidence of their ties. After news broke in 2020 that Jeevish was accused of being a mastermind behind sex abuse cover-up in Rome. Stanisław Dziwisz. One day before the Vatican's McCarrick report was released in November 2020, a Polish documentary aired indicting Dziwisz as complicit in the crimes of the defrocked homosexual predator cardinal. Among the claims, McCarrick victim James Grine alleges Jeevish accepted tens of thousands of dollars in bribe money from McCarrick to turn a blind eye to his crimes. Jeevish is also accused of protecting Father Martial Maciel, founder of the Legion of Christ, later exposed as a notorious serial predator and even rapist of his own children, fathered by numerous concubines. Like McCarrick, Maciel funneled many thousands of dollars to Jeevish, an exchange, critics say, for Jeevish's silence. The Polish documentary concluded Jeevish was part of a sex trafficking ring from Poland to the U.S. So Jeevish, directly associated with clergy sex abuse cover-up, was also directly involved in helping Kroll recruit unsuspecting Polish seminarians to homosexual-friendly Detroit. Jeevish was placed under both Vatican and state criminal investigation last year. The Polish prosecutor's office ultimately declined to press charges, and in April, the Vatican cleared Jeevish of allegations he mishandled abuse allegations in Krakow. The Vatican did not examine claims Jeevish accepted many tens of thousands of dollars in hush money as papal secretary. It was Jeevish who was responsible for bringing Sobchuk to the U.S., yet another Polish purportedly homosexual seminarian funneled through Orchard Lake and farmed out to another diocese, in this case, Knoxville. From the 2018 issue of the East Tennessee Catholic, Mr. Sobchuk, 23, is a theology student from Poland who arrived in the Diocese of Knoxville at the recommendation of Archbishop Stanislav Dziwisz, who visited the diocese for the dedication of the Cathedral of the Most Sacred Heart of Jesus in March. And Sobchuk is not the only Polish seminarian to come to Knoxville. According to the lawsuit, several others have come and gone, some also accused of sexual misconduct. Dziwisz is now trying to distance himself from Sobchuk, Telling the Catholic Herald last year, he knows the seminarian only slightly and only met him by chance during the Knoxville Cathedral consecration. Two weeks before this directly contradicts Sobchuk's own words, who says he's known Jeevish since his time in Poland, where the cardinal was a friend of the family. Not only did the cardinal visit with Sobchuk at Orchard Lake in March 2018, long before the Knoxville Cathedral consecration, it was Jeevish who insisted that Sobchuk go to Knoxville. It was only days after this encounter at Orchard Lake that Sobchuk got the phone call from Stika inviting him to Tennessee. Another twist. Knoxville's first bishop got his start in Missouri, just like Stika. It's in Missouri that the bishop, Anthony O'Connell, is accused of molesting numerous boys. And it's in Missouri where Stika and then Archbishop Justin Regali would have first learned of those abuse allegations, never reporting them to police. Knoxville is a young diocese, first established in 1988 by Pope John Paul II, who appointed Anthony O'Connell its first bishop. O'Connell got his start as a priest in Jefferson City, Missouri, serving as teacher and principal at the now-defunct St. Thomas Aquinas Preparatory Seminary in Hannibal. 
Reports of his molestation of teen boys didn't service until 1993, when O'Connell had already moved on to be Bishop of Knoxville. In 1996, the Diocese of Jefferson City settled a sex abuse lawsuit with one of O'Connell's accusers, Christopher Dixon, who was 13 when the abuse began. The $125,000 settlement came with a non-disclosure agreement, ensuring the victim's silence. Are you enjoying your stay in St. Louis? Very, very definitely. I see all these wonderful people. Can that same year, Justin Regali was being installed as Archbishop of St. Louis, the Metropolitan Archdiocese that oversees all the dioceses in Missouri. Then Father Richard Sticker was given favored status as his personal secretary, chancellor, and vicar general. Sticker was in charge of overseeing sex abuse cases, interviewing victims and abusers, and determining whether allegations were credible. He would later oversee the Office of Child Protection. Bishop O'Connell was a sitting bishop in Knoxville until 98. So he had allegations brought against him in the Archdiocese of St. Louis during the tenure of Regali and Sticker. Richard Sticker was Regali's right-hand man. I also find it very difficult to believe that allegations against a sitting bishop, a, not just some lowly cleric somewhere, but an actual sitting bishop, exactly. would not have reached the ears of both Regali and then his chancellor, Bishop Sticker. And as I, I don't think anybody ever reported him to police, did they? Absolutely not. In spite of the abuse settlement, incredibly, in 1999, O'Connell was reassigned as Bishop of Palm Beach, Florida. In 2002, Dixon worked up the courage to break the NDA and tell the truth. It led to O'Connell's immediate resignation, becoming the first bishop in the nation to resign following the Boston Globe's shattering exposés of clergy sex abuse. The bishop who replaced him... O'Connell admitted to the abuse in a press conference announcing his resignation. I'm mortified and I'm saddened and embarrassed and ashamed, he told reporters. The Vatican was unaware of the abuse settlement when it chose him to lead Palm Beach. An attorney for the Jefferson City Diocese admitted it had never occurred to church officials there to inform the Vatican or anyone else in the church about it. Quite frankly, I would say it was a lapse in judgment. Touching the lives of so many people his successor in Knoxville was Bishop Joseph Kurtz, installed in 1999, who would go on to become president of the U.S. Bishops' Conference. Kurtz worked to rehabilitate O'Connell's public image, even allowing his portrait to remain up in the Chancery offices as late as 2007. They think it's just perfectly fine to have a pedophile picture on the wall. There he is, Anthony J. O'Connell, first bishop of Knoxville, molester of teenage boys, right here in the Diocese of Knoxville. Kurtz even allowed the Diocesan Council of Catholic Women in 2003 to celebrate O'Connell, an admitted molester, on the 40th anniversary of his priesthood, circulating a spiritual bouquet on his behalf. When allegations first came out about O'Connell in the late 1990s, Kurtz met with concerned mothers and gave them a pious speech in an attempt to allay their fears. I said, Bishop, okay, let's stop right there. What are you going to do? Are you going to get in the pulpit and correct these errors about Anthony O'Connell? Are you going to tell the people the truth so that our children are safe? Are you going to stop these folk tales really being built up about O'Connell. And you know what he did? He stared at me and said nothing. Without Christmas, there would be no Easter, huh? In 2009, Sticker would succeed Kurtz as the third bishop of Knoxville. Nine years later, he would be sued by one of O'Connell's victims, who accused him in the diocese of failing to protect him from O'Connell and other predators. On July 18, 2018, Michael Boyd filed a lawsuit against the Knoxville Diocese. It came nearly a year after fruitless communications with Bishop Sticker about his abuse. 
Bishop Richard Sticka says the church contacted authorities when presented with the allegations. He also says its independent investigation, quote, concluded there was no finding of credible evidence to support the allegations. But Susan Vance says that's not true. The diocese contacted the Department of Children's Services, not the police, knowing Children's Services had no power to do anything. Today, O'Connell's name is listed among the credibly accused clergy in the Diocese of Jefferson City. He's also listed among credibly accused clergy in Knoxville. But the cathedral continues to honor him. Just to the right of the vestibule, you'll find the Clergy Purgatorial Society book. And featured on its very first page, Bishop Anthony O'Connell. In his bio, no mention of his abuse. There has been a cover-up then and ever since. And that Justin Regali and Richard Sicca are here today because of those allegations. The protective role of Cardinal Regali cannot be underestimated in all of this. From the leaked document, Bishop Richard Sticca and, to a lesser extent, Cardinal Justin Regali, have played a huge part in the Sobchuk story. Bishop Sticca has been protected by Justin Regali his entire priesthood, from 1993 and 94 when he became Regali's uh, personal secretary. There aren't many bishops who have a cardinal living with them, a retired cardinal, who is directly responsible for his appointment as a bishop. He was the cardinal's vicar general when he was in St. Louis. Now he's a bishop, and now Cardinal Regali is living with him. It stands to reason that, you know, he has been somewhat of a, been a protecting role for Sticka. After his tenure in St. Louis, Regali was appointed Archbishop of Philadelphia in 2003, where he served until 2011. The victim's name is John Delaney. He says Cardinal Regali did not do enough in his time in Philadelphia to root out so-called predator priests. Regali left behind a tainted track record on mishandling sex abuse. It is my intention to consider carefully and take very seriously any observations and recommendations of this grand jury. A 2011 grand jury report accused the Philadelphia Archdiocese of covering up abuse allegations involving nearly 40 clergymen, among them then-father Michael Bransfield. After a teen accused Bransfield of molesting him, Regali launched an investigation that ended up clearing the priest of all wrongdoing. Bransfield went on to become Bishop of Wheeling, Charleston, West Virginia where he was accused of homosexual predation and embezzlement of millions of dollars in diocesan funds. Bishop Michael J. Bransfield of West Virginia resigned today. He was forced to step down in 2018. Regali himself resigned in disgrace in 2011, moving to Knoxville at the invitation of Bishop Sticka. From the diocesan announcement, we used to chat about the possibility of the Cardinals living with me when he retired, Bishop Sticka said. But I thought it would be in a rectory where I was serving as a parish priest in the Archdiocese of St. Louis, not in the bishop's residence in East Tennessee. A woman says she was assaulted by Father Anthony Punicle back in February of 2020. Fast forward to the present, and Bishop Sticka is embroiled in yet another sex abuse cover-up scandal this one involving a priest and a grand jury indictment. The parish of the Smokies, that's the term we use because it's basically for the visiting parishioners. Father Anthony Punakal, priest at St. Mary's in Gatlinburg, was arrested in January after a grand jury returned an indictment of sexual assault. The incident took place in 2020 when a woman grieving the death of her husband came to the priest for counseling. A lawsuit filed by the victim in April details the assault. Punakal locked the doors to the room. He pointed to plaintiff's breasts, asking in pantomime whether she had just given birth and had a baby. 
Plaintiff's breasts were indeed full with milk for her infant third child, the same child whose father had just been murdered. Without invitation, Punakal began fondling plaintiff's breasts and buttocks. Plaintiff rebuffed Punakal, but he continued his assault. The locked doors prevented defendant from leaving. Worse, when the priest admitted to the assault, Bishop Sticka left him in place at the parish, waiting two years to suspend him, only after the grand jury indicted him. The cathedral is a five-minute drive from the bishop's residence. There, a telling sign. During the $42 million renovation, Bishop Sticka insisted, among the religious iconography, that his dogs be painted into the dome. To the left and right of St. Francis's feet, Molly and Rosie, Sticka's pets. They're visible only from the bishop's chair. In the tree next to St. Francis, harder to see, another personal request from Sticka, the logo of his favorite baseball team, the St. Louis Cardinals. It's led critics to say the cathedral is meant not to be a monument to God, but rather to the bishop's ego. I would have hoped that that something would have been done, uh, but to date, nothing has been. And I know things happen, you know, in an interminably slow pace in Rome, but something has to happen soon. I am hoping that he, he resigns or is removed because we can't take much more of this. We have to have better. Sobchuk is now studying philosophy at the University of St. Louis in Missouri, former stomping grounds of Cardinal Regali and Bishop Sticka. Neither Sobchuk nor the university are answering questions about the rape allegations. Meanwhile, Sticka has made clear Sobchuk may eventually reapply as a seminarian in Knoxville. As to the lawsuit, the bishop has been unusually quiet, shutting down his Twitter account, refusing to answer media queries, and issuing a single statement framing the allegations as a personal attack. One paragraph in the 46-page lawsuit is worth highlighting. Sobchuk also discussed secret relationships that priests of the diocese were having with others. In the face of this sordid tale involving a disgraced seminarian, a gay Polish pipeline, a dishonest bishop, and a cardinal who protects him, one has to ask, what else is Bishop Sticka hiding? Christine Niles, Church Militant, Detroit.